In the last lecture, we had a high level overview of what is a store, an action and a reducer in NGRX state management system. Now in this lecture, we are going to create a store, create some actions and create a reducer. And we will try to understand how these three are linked together. So let's first go to NGRX documentation. Here I'm at ngrx.io website and I have opened the docs for NGRX. Here we want to work with NGRX store in this section. So we need to install NGRX store for our Angular application so that we can create a store, create actions and create reducers in our Angular application. And for that, I'll expand this link. And in here, if I go to installation, there you can see the ng command for adding ngrx store to your Angular application. So here we need to use ng add and we want to add ngrx store to our Angular application. And after this add symbol, we can specify which version of ngrx store do we want to use in our Angular application. So I will copy this command and let's go to VS Code. Here, let me clear the terminal and I'm going to paste that command. Now, for this course, I'm going to install ngrx store version 16. I don't want to use the latest version of ngrx store since I'm using Angular 16 project. That's why for the Angular 16 project, I'm going to add ngrx store version 16. Let's go ahead and let's press enter. So here it is asking me whether I would like to proceed with the installation and execution of ngrx store version 16. Here I will type Y and I'll press enter. So now the installation has started. You will see that it says package successfully installed and it has updated two files. It has updated app.module.ts file and it has also updated package.json file. So let's see how it has updated the package.json file. If I scroll down and if I go to package.json file, there you will see that in the dependencies section, a new dependency for ngrx2 has been added. So ngrx2 version 16 has been added in the package.json file. And if we go to app module, so here I have the app module.ts file. In there, you will see that the store module has been added in the import array. And on this store module, we are calling this for root method. To this for root method, we need to pass all the states which we want to have in this store. So we are importing the store module using which we are going to create a store. And on that, we are using this for root method. So when we use for root method, the states which we will add to the store that will be available for whole application. We also have for feature method. So when we use for feature method to create a store, in that case, the states which we add to that store, it is only available for that feature for that module. But here I'm going to keep it as for root because whatever state we will add to this store, we want to have that state available throughout the application. So I'll keep these changes as it is. Now we need to create a state and then we are going to add that state to this store. So let me close all these files, which is not required. So for now, I'll also close app module.ts file. All right. Now I'm going to create a very simple state called counter and that state we are only going to use inside this counter component. So we are going to use it inside this counter component or its child components. So for that, I'm going to create a new folder inside this counter folder and I'm going to call it as states. And inside this folder, first of all, I'm going to create a file and I'll call it as counter.state.com yes okay in here i am going to create an object and i am going to call it as initial state okay this is going to be an object and here we also need to use the equal to sign and i'm also going to export this object so that i can use this object anywhere outside of this file inside this object so this is going to be our state object Inside this, I'm going to create a counter property and I'm going to initialize it with initial value zero. Okay, so here I have created a state and in that state, currently I have a single state property. Now I'm going to create an 
action so again inside the states folder i'm going to create a new file and i'm going to call it as counter dot actions dot ts and inside this file we are going to keep all the actions which we might want to perform on this counter state now when i say counter state i don't mean just this property instead i mean this complete object so this complete object here is our counter state now here we are not giving it any name but we are going to give this state a name when we are going to add it to the store and you'll see that in a bit so on this state whichever action we want to perform we are going to specify that inside this file so first of all i am going to create an action called increment so i want to call this action whenever the increment button in the counter button component is clicked and to create an action we have a method called i mean we have a function called create action and to use this create action we need to import it from ngrx store and to this we need to pass a value for the type here for this action we need to pass a name a value for the type parameter and that i'm going to call as increment okay and let's also export it from here because we are going to use these actions in the reducer because as we learned in the last lecture the job of reducer is to wait for an action to be dispatched and based on which action has been dispatched it is going to create a new state so here i have created one action called increment let me create two more actions here this i will call as decrement and we also need to specify a unique name for this action so i'm going to call it as decrement so the type value which we are specifying here it should always be unique this action i'm going to call it as reset and let's also specify a unique type value for that so i'm going to call it as reset and we are exporting all these three actions from this file so in this way we have created three actions increment decrement and reset now here you see there is no relation between the action and the counter state in this file nowhere we are saying that on which state this increment decrement or reset action will be performed we are just saying that we have created some actions increment decrement and reset now we are going to create a reducer so again in the states folder i am going to create a new file i'll call it as counter dot reducer dot ts so here again i'm going to create a variable i will call it as counter reducer and to create a reducer again we can use a function create reducer and to use this create reducer we again need to import it from ngrx store okay and this create reducer if you see it is going to return us an action reducer so we are going to assign it to this counter reducer variable and we are going to export it from here okay now this create reducer it takes one mandatory argument and that is the state on which this reducer has to operate now here i want this reducer to operate on this counter state basically this state which we are creating and this state we are storing in this initial state constant so we are going to pass this initial state constant as the first parameter to this create reducer so here i'll say initial state and to use that initial state we need to import it from counter dot state file so this is the first argument then the rest of the arguments will be the reducer function which will handle an action and for example let's say here we have these three actions increment decrement and reset so whenever the increment action is dispatched we want to handle it how do we want to handle it by incrementing this counter variable by one so for that we can specify a reducer function here using on method so to this on method first we need to specify which action we want to handle here here i want to handle increment action and to use this increment action to pass this increment action to this on method we also need to import it from counter.action file so it has been imported so that will be the first argument the action name 
and the second argument will be a callback function from where we need to return a new state now this callback function here it is going to receive the current state so let's call it as state and it is going to receive the payload if any payload is passed when that action was dispatched now for this increment action we are not going to receive any payload so i will not specify the second argument here and also to use this on method we need to import it from ngrx2 so let's specify that and from here we need to return a new state now here this state will be assigned with the current state snapshot of this state so for example let's say the state has already changed and its value is let's say 6 here for this counter the value is 6 in that case that current state will be assigned to this state parameter so from that current state we want to get the current value of all the state properties for that on that state we are going to use spread operator to get all the properties from the current state so in this state currently we have only one property but let's say if i have two properties i also have is loading and only the value of is loading has changed the value of counter has not changed then what we will do is we will extract these two properties from this state object and since only the value of is loading has changed we will only change the value for that property for rest of the properties we will keep the same value and to do that here on this state i am using the spread operator to extract all the properties from the state object and in that state object i want to override a property which property i want to override i want to override the counter property so to this i am going to assign a new value now this state as i mentioned this state is going to receive this object so in that object we have a counter property to that i want to assign one so i hope you got what i have done here first i am extracting all the properties from the current state object in our state we have only one property but let's say if we have multiple properties then i am extracting all the properties from that object and i am overriding only that single property for which the state has changed okay and here you see what we are doing is we are returning a new object and in this new object we have all the properties from the state and there we also have the updated value for one of the state property so here we are returning a new state and we are not modifying the previous state we are not changing the previous state instead from the previous state we are getting the value of all the state properties and then there we are only changing that state property which we want to change and then this new object this new state will be returned and that will be passed to the store and now the angular application is going to use this new state i hope this is clear in the same way let's also go ahead and let's create reducer functions for decrement action so again to use this decrement action we are going to import it from counter.action file and here also we need to pass a callback function from where we are going to return a new state object okay so here this function is going to get the current state and from that current state we want to extract all the properties and we just want to override one property which is counter and how do i want to override it so from the state object i am going to get the current value of the counter property and to that i am going to subtract one okay and finally let's also create a reducer for handling reset action so again we are going to use this on method to that we are going to specify the action name the action name is reset so i'm going to import it from counter.action file and then let's pass the reducer function which should be called which will be called whenever the reset action is dispatched and this callback function is going to receive the state object so first 
let's go ahead and let's return a new state object and in that object we want to extract all the properties that i'm doing using spread operator on the state object and then i want to override the counter property so for that i can say i can create this counter property and i can assign it with the value zero and this is it so in this way we have created a state okay this is our state we have created an action and we have created a reducer now the only thing which is left is we need to add this state to the store and to do that let's go to app module.ts file and from here what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass an object and in that object we need to specify a name for the state so here i'm going to specify the name as counter so now this counter will be assigned with this object now we can have multiple states like this so how i am saying that only this state will be assigned to this counter property that's because we are going to map this counter property with a reducer in this case i'm going to map it with counter reducer and to use this counter reducer we also need to import it and when we were creating that counter reducer which state we have passed to it here we are passing the initial state which we have imported from counter dot state so since this counter property here it is mapped with this reducer we can say that this counter is going to receive this state because in the reducer when we are creating that reducer we are using this state as the first argument while creating that reducer so in more simple terms we can say that this counter is the name which we are giving to this state and wherever we want to use this state there we can simply use counter as the name okay so here we created a state we created an action and we created a reducer and now we have added the state to the store and we are calling it as counter and we have mapped this counter state to this counter reducer so this counter reducer is responsible for changing this state and when this counter reducer is going to change the state whenever there will be an increment action dispatched or an decrement action dispatched or a reset action is dispatched and in the same way we can create more reducer functions which we want to use to change this counter state all right so i hope all this is clear now in the next lecture we are going to see how we can use this state which we are creating here in the components so this state here it is storing the state object and from that state object we might be interested in using this counter state in some of the components let's see how we can do that in our next lecture this is all from this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day